So we're entering into a really interesting part of the course, but it's also a part of the course where a lot of people start scratching their heads saying, what, what are we doing? What's going on? This doesn't feel like calculus at all. And the reason we often get that feeling in this part of the course is that we're building up to something. And the part at the end will make us go, wow, that's so cool. But the thing is, we have to start laying the groundwork. And if we don't understand where we're going, then we get lost, we get confused. So before we begin, let's lay out what is our motivation and how do we get to where we want to go. All right, so let's take a look. Our starting point is our notion of saying, hey, let's approximate functions. It's one of the first things we did when we started calculus. We said, you know, we have these things called tangent lines. And so a, a line, it's a linear function, and it says, look, the, the function, I can approximate it really well. It's the function at a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So it's some number, c0 plus c1 times x minus a. And one of the things that tangent lines do is they say, oh, what I'm capturing is what's the value of the function and what's the derivative of the function. You might say, okay, well, can we do better? And you say, okay, well, sure, you can do better. For instance, maybe if you take something about the second derivative, that's a third piece of information. So now you have the function, the derivative, and the second derivative all at that point. And you can come up with a quadratic function, c0 plus c1x minus a plus c2x minus a squared, so that you match all those three pieces of information. But then we start saying, ah, more. why not more? Give us more. We say, okay, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And you know, you're like, no, give it to us all. We want all the derivatives. And I'm like, wah. Okay, and that's where we want to get to. We want to say, let's use all the derivatives. So that what we can say is that, look, we're perfectly capturing the behavior of the function at that point with this infinite polynomial. Okay, what does that mean? And how do we interpret that? So what we're really after, our main goal is saying, how can we approximate a function very well? And in the process, we have to say, well, what does it mean to build up something like an infinite polynomial? So where are we going? How do we get there? So here's our, our map. This will tell us what our steps are along the way. We're going to start with something very simple. We're going to start with saying, look, we're after sequences. These are going to be collections of numbers. So when we think of dot, 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 dot is the standard for saying the pattern continues. So right now, the dot, dot says, I have this long list of numbers, a long list of values. Then we say, OK. Let's transition to talking about adding them up. So that's when we talk about series. So that gets us to the plus dot, dot, dot. So in other words, what does it mean to add infinitely many things together? And uh, of course, you might say, wait, is it possible to add infinitely many things? Well, OK, technically, no, it's not. But with limits, what we can say is this is what it would be if you were able to do it. So that's where we're going. We're going to say, okay, how do we say what should be the sum when we add up infinitely many things? All right, now that we can add infinitely many things, we start saying, okay, so the next thing is to talk about the things that we're adding up are essentially polynomials. So we form what we call power series. And we think of this, hey, this is our infinite polynomial. So now we're like, okay, what does that mean? And how do we interpret it? When does it make sense? That's actually a really big question. A significant chunk of the time is going to be coming down to the question of, can we add infinitely many things and get something out that makes sense? So in other words, convergence. Does this infinite sum go to a number or does it not go to a number? So we have to think about what that means for the infinite polynomial. Well, for which choices of x does it make sense? 
And finally, we say, okay, now that we have this setup, we now can talk about infinite polynomials. Finally, we get to our destination, which is Taylor series. And it says, look, I can convert my function into a series. And you'll notice something very important here. It says what? Well, my function is not just approximately some polynomial, but it's exactly some polynomial. Now, there are restrictions that, you know, for some restricted choice of x, but we say, ah, this is beautiful. We now have a way to think of our function as polynomials. And you might be thinking, well, okay, that's great, but what's so special about polynomials? Well, the nice thing about polynomials is how do you evaluate a polynomial? What do you need? You need to be able to do two things. You need to be able to add and to multiply. Now, what are computers good at? Add and multiply. Like, wow, perfect. Computers love polynomials. Aha. Now, what if you have other functions? Because well, we've talked about other functions like e to the x, sine x, cosine x. What does a computer do? Well, a computer says, hey, I can add and I can multiply. And we're like, well, great, but what about these other things? No, no, add and multiply, that's it. But now we can say, ah, our problem transforms. We can now use these polynomials for either exact expressions, if we're willing to add up infinitely many terms, or fantastic approximations. So it's this lovely idea that says, look, Almost everything that we work with, we can approximate what we're doing incredibly well through the use of polynomials. And that makes things possible. And we like it when things are possible. So there's our roadmap. How do we think about implementing many things with sequences? How do we add them up, that series? When does it make sense? All right, now think about infinite polynomials, power series, and now we get to approximation our beautiful destination, and we're ready to begin. So, time to set on out.